Let's talk about the Emoji Movie. Uh, this one has a lot more notes than it did. Also, hopefully this video is more well exposed than the it one was. Anyways, theater experience, first of all. Uh, I haven't been to my local theater that I've, it's usually the one that I pick. Um, I haven't been there in a while and suddenly they have recliners and it didn't cost me anything extra, although that might have been because I went to a matinee. Also, movie pass card means I don't give a shit. Um, it was mostly empty because the movie's been out for like, what, a couple of months now or something? <sighs> Let's see. Um, there was one kid next to me who actually brought her pet bunny in a cardboard box. And I, for a second, I thought it was like a stuffed animal, but it, it was a live bunny. So that was interesting. Um, very cute rabbit. Uh, the recliners also have little seat tables. So I was able to set my little book down and write. That's why this is actually more legible than the it one, which uh, if you need a refresher on how that looked, it's right over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, before I even get into the whole movie part, the kid laughed. I won't say laughed, but gave the, huh, like, maybe three times through the movie. There was no significant, oh my god, I'm dying laughing, from anyone in the theater. There was, like, <laughs> that was the most anyone got, including myself. There was a couple of times where there was a joke where I was like, okay, I'll give you that one. That was, that was decent. Um, most of them had to do with Patrick Stewart as the poop emoji. Um, like, yes, his existence was just a bunch of shit jokes, literally and figuratively, but there was a couple that were like, do better. Like he was, anyways, I'll get to that later. So, trailers. Ferdinand. More like fur Denand. Get it? Because mm, fur, yeah. Uh, they literally did the bull in a china shop thing. The horses were German for no reason. And the hedgehogs were literally spin dashing around like Sonic. Go look up the trailer for Ferdinand. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, wonder about that kid that's like disfigured. Oh boy, feel good. Th I don't care. Paddington 2. Today I learned there's a first Paddington movie. The Star. Oh, this was the one about the uh, three wise men. Or whatever. And there were three kings. Mon Luther, Don, and Rodney. That's the only version of that story that I give a shit about. Uh, Jumanji. The kids in Jumanji would make a terrible D&D &D group, is what I have written down for that trailer. Um, and then the only other things in the theater experience section I have is... There was a baby that wound up crying eventually, but it's not like there was any loud-ass things in the movie to trigger such a response. And towards the third act, through the end of the movie, the children who existed in the front half of the theater started to get a bit restless and loud. I kind of felt for him because it was so bland. So, on to the movie. And I will go ahead and preface everything about the movie with... This. And, um... This movie obviously is not good. But I also don't think that it's like the coming of the Antichrist, like everybody seems to like to say that it is. It's <sighs> to abuse a plot pun, it's meh. Main character is meh, his family is meh, the movie is very meh. So, let's... You know what? Let's start with the bad stuff, because there's significantly more bad than there is good in this movie. Um, and I actually... I may actually like the good more than I hate the bad. 
but let's see the bed um the columbia logo got a little snapchat filter emoji on it like i gave the it logo credit for including the balloon but i don't know this one is like too on the note it's the subject matter that's like the balloon is oh it's pennywise it's a thing but snapchat is like if you don't use this one app you don't get I don't, know. I don't know why i'm drawing weird lines like this anyways um the very first establishing shot of the movie is oh and by the way i have an establishing shot counter um so the very first opening shots of the movie are earth into atoms into um, pixel grid as in red, green, blue but then it zooms out of the pixel grid into like not each set of RGB turns into one pixel it's like thousands of pixel sets make up a single pixel and then all of that makes up the display like for a movie about a very specific technology I'll say it gets pretty much all of the technology parts absolutely completely irredeemably wrong um let's see god these notes like the movie is so forgettable so a lot of these notes are just gonna be jokes that didn't land and things like that um shitty road a uh, poop emoji just kind of fell over in the road and died i guess um straya shrimp i for some reason a shrimp emoji was just australian for no reason and had to throw in the we're gonna go in the bobby oh don't do that um for some reason the bathroom mirror had one frame it had one frame over the the sink that gene used gene being the main character um, it doesn't have this same frame on any of the other mirrors over the other sinks, which doesn't make any sense, because you want to enable everyone to be able to do their poses in the mirror, but they don't get to frame themselves up. Just little inconsistencies. This movie is full of little inconsistencies like that. Um, I have the word unresponsive, and this was to do with they decided to include the outside world where the humans are interacting with their phones and trying to type only in emojis so Alex the not the main character but basically the Andy to Jean's Woody um, Alex goes to type the single emoji and then you get this long sequence where they use the machine to scan the emoji and then it gets put into the messaging app but it takes like 30 40 seconds so imagine that input lag you do something on your phone and you're like well I just want to go to the home page or whatever so you hit it and then it takes 40 seconds for it to do it that would be fucking infuriating it would be unusable um, the, oh, yeah, there's a couple things that I have in both the bad and the good, actually. Um, so, I have Smiler written in the bad, and then throughout the movie, she actually wound up growing on me, kind of. But, like, Smiler might... Smiler's in the bad because she's part of a repeated inconsistency throughout the movie where it's like... The whole gist of it is uh, Gene is going to be deleted because he has the malfunction, and it is called a malfunction, of being able to show more than one emotion. So Gene is a four-leaf clover being treated as a four-leaf clover actually should, as a genetic freak, um, and not as someone who should just stand out. Like, that's a problem. There's a reason that things don't develop this way. Anyways, so, Smiler has several lines throughout the movie, like, I gotta stay happy, even though 
What does it matter if she gets very angry if all she can ever do is show the smiley face anyways? Uh, then I have emoji glyphs. They heavily imply that hieroglyphics from ancient Egypt were the first emojis. Okay. Like, maybe. Uh, let's see, voxel debris. I'm not sure why I put voxel debris in the bad. I think I was just giving the movie too much shit for being way too on the nose with how digital it is. So, they rip through the cubes and all of the broken bits are voxels. Like, if anything, that's a decent way to reinforce that we're inside a digital device, whatever. Um, I have, next in the bad, I have Stephen Wright in the bad, even though Stephen Wright was written first in the good section. Because what better person to get for a meh emoji than Stephen Wright? He has the perfect voice. He's K. Billy Sounds of the 80s, or whatever the hell it was. Um, so... But, okay, he's in the bad because anytime his character actually has to deliver something with emotion, it actually takes away from him being a meh. Although, it's later revealed that he also has the malfunction that his son has, and it's genetic. Um, but, when his wife, played by whatever the fuck her name is, the Stifler's mom, and the annoying, like, whore sounds like, she's supposed to be Polish or something, but her voice just sounds retarded from uh, Two Broke Girls. If anyone's ever watched that, just to stare at Kat Dennings, you know who I'm talking about. Um, they both deliver some lines with some emotion, and it sucks every time. So, next thing we have hashtag truth. For some reason, characters would just randomly throw out hashtag thing uh, when they were talking to each other. Just, just to be fellow kids. Like, this is our fellow kids, the movie, basically. Uh, then I have art drinks alive, which was when high five goes to... God damn it. Um... When High Five goes to this party, he just picks up a drink off the table, and every single emoji in this movie is shown to have been alive. And I'm pretty sure that those drinks on the table were still modeled after existing emojis. Obviously, I didn't go through my phone and check. God damn it, Steel, stop doing that shit. Um, so I didn't go through and check all the emojis, but I was thinking, like, if they're modeled after things that exist, why wouldn't those drinks be alive? And wouldn't that be, then, cannibalism? Next thing I have is the eggplant emoji being in the loser's thing. No. Eggplant is not underused. Eggplant has a very specific purpose. God damn it. <sighs> oh, then we have the piracy app. That's just a specific app for being a pirate. And it's full of... It's a, it's a tavern full of trolls. And trolls are just, for some reason, programs that exist on a phone. They're not even people. They're just things that exist that can be eradicated by an antivirus. Um, and it has... It's full of viruses, too. And the antivirus, like, the antivirus drones that show up can go into each app. And why would they never check? I'm trying to remember what the fuck he had it skinned as. Uh, what the fuck was it? Uh, I don't remember. But he had it skinned as something lame. Like, okay, I've done that before, and it was, uh... I had a Pornhub app skinned as U.S. Postal Service at one point, but fuck it. Why would why would the security of the phone not be able to check every app? I don't know. It was dumb. 
Uh, then I have Nothing Feels Real, which obviously, no shit, nothing feels real. But what I meant by this was visually, there really didn't seem to be a point where the characters actually seem to exist in their environment. Like, I don't know if it was the lighting or the perspective or something that they chose to do, but it just, feel, it just felt like the characters were standing in one space and then they were green screened into the environment all the time. It just felt off. I don't know what that was. Um, damn, that note was actually made very early into the movie. Um, oh, and then the wallpaper, going back to the antivirus, being able to get into everything. So when they leave Textopolis, which is the home of all the emojis and shit, they go into what High Five re uh, refers to as the wallpaper. And the wallpaper visually is stupid, but plot-wise is even stupider. So, visually first, Gene looks down, sees the galaxy wallpaper, and thinks he's falling into an endless abyss, and then it's revealed he's not. Which means, perspective-wise, this person is walking around with a wallpaper that, like, for a display this size, the galaxy on it is like that, and then all of this is just stars or something, just individual pixel dots of stars, but the galaxy is like the size of one of these icons if it's focusing on that. Um, so that's just a shit wallpaper. Uh, as for why story-wise it's terrible, is Gene, Jailbreak, which is a way too fucking on the nose name, and High Five, they are walking in the wallpaper, or the desktop as it should have been called, even though it's not a desktop, nobody knows what a fucking desktop is anymore, I guess. Um, or the home screen, fuck. Anyways, they're walking through this, and they're walking around the app icons, and the story... The story beats are a series of and then and then and then and then. There's not a there's not really a single because this, then they have to do this. Or they do this, but oh no, this happens and then this must happen. There's not a lot of that. It's just nonsense. They they don't ever justify why they have to do things in the order that they do them. So they go from Textopolis to Candy Crush, to Just Dance, to Spotify, to Dropbox, and then <laughs> they get to Dropbox and Gene gets rejected-ish by um, Jailbreak, and then he becomes a true meh, which actually would be a way to resolve the whole story in a really fucking downer note. Um, but then he gets captured, and they literally summon Twitter to take them back. Oh my god. It's just a series of what the fuck, why is this happening? So, I'm not even sure where I was going with that, but god damn it. Oh, just the wallpaper. Okay, so back to why the wallpaper is stupid. They're going through these apps to the other apps, but why can't they just walk through the wallpaper to the just go straight to Dropbox like they wind up using uh, Gene's ability to make different faces to brute force the password for the firewall preventing them from getting into Dropbox and off the phone um, so why couldn't they just run straight to Dropbox like yes the the antivirus bots are following them but the antivirus bots are just always shown to have Imperial Marksman or Imperial Stormtrooper Marksmanship training or they're just incompetent in close quarters combat as the upgraded one is so they're fucking useless anyways they could have just ran away um let's see I actually wound up fucking 
covering a couple of my next few points in that rant about the wallpaper. So we'll skip the word virus and we'll go to Hack Daniels. That was just a lame ass joke in the piracy app. I was like, God damn, dad humor up in this. Uh, I already covered the antivirus bots. Uh, didn't cover Candy Crush, but God, the movie literally teaches the audience how to play Candy Crush, and then they play Candy Crush, and then High Fives eats a bunch of candy, and then nothing. They just leave Candy Crush. There's just an ad for Candy Crush. Okay. Uh, and then I have just the phrase reboot dude Which is why the fuck did Alex never reboot his phone to try and fix these things like Alex is the person that's like my shit's broken I never plugged it in like he's the guy that IT people make fun of um, Let's see uh, I Have YouTube they went into the YouTube app and just played cat videos that's strong. Um, I have JD, and I don't remember what that was. It wasn't the Hack Daniels joke. It was something else. Uh, I have number one. I don't remember what that was. I have the troll. I already covered that. Uh, oh, I have the upgraded bot, which I also covered. Um, Alex's password for the firewall winds up being Addy. Which is the girl he's interested in, which is the one that he sent the freak emoji to in the first place to cause the whole plot of the movie. So this kid lives in a universe where it's okay for your phone to take 40 seconds to respond to a single tap. And... Like, she... She winds up liking him because he's able to express himself because of the animated emoji at the end. But I'm just like, what the fuck? How ridiculously flat can you be as a character? Where you're just like, yeah, that's all I care about is you send me a fancy emoji. Let's go to the dance together. I'll suck your dick. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this is on the next line. The animated emojis are just... Oh, yeah. They also live in, an, in a universe where they've never seen a GIF before in their lives. So that's neat. Um... Oh, and in the climax of the movie, Alex unplugs the phone while it's, I guess, being factory reset at the phone store. And as far as I know, doing something like that is a really good way of bricking a phone. So, yeah, you're yet again the person that IT makes fun of because you're just doing dumb shit without being informed as to what it would do. And you're going to piss people off and cause people to waste effort that they shouldn't have to on your stupid ass. Um, and speaking of his phone, it seems that anytime he opens the front-facing camera, it's just random whether it's going to be recording in like 4x3 or 16x9 horizontal, even though the phone is vertical and it should then be recording vertical video. So that didn't make any sense. Oh, and his phone just has a flash on the front. That was crazy. Like, he was taking selfies at a dance with the front camera, and it had a flash on it. I was like, whoa, dude. A, why are you using the flash indoors, you piece of shit? And B, where did you get a phone that has a front-facing flash? That's fucking crazy. Not that I want that to exist. Please don't make that exist. All right, so let's go for the good stuff. And there wasn't much. Um, the best part of the movie, actually, was the short that came before it. And I can definitely get behind the trend of um, animation studios trying to copy Pixar, where they just do a goofy bullshit thing to test new tech before the movie. Because the short called Puppy before the Emoji movie was actually kind of funny. I liked it a lot. Uh, and then a lot of the good stuff is just jokes that did land for me, I think. We have Oh My Colon, 
which was Jean bumps into a bunch of actual emoticons and knocks over one of the characters. And by characters, I mean letter characters. And it, like the colon part falls off of colon parenthesis. And he's like, oh my colon. And I don't know. I just thought it was funny. Maybe it's because I work with old people. Um, we have Stephen Wright. I've already mentioned what a good person to play a meh. We have Smiler's Window, which the window to Smiler's um, like high-rise office turned into a fucking Cheshire Cat smile. That was actually kind of cool. And she was she was like cleaning her teeth when she was threatening Jean with being deleted, and she dangled. A, uh, a piece of floss in front of the camera and it looked like a noose and I was like holy shit that's dark as fuck uh, good as well we had high five talking about like all you need in this who cares about friends all you need in this world is fans they'll support you as they'll support you through anything as long as you're number one. Oh, that's what the number one was in the bad Okay, so I was like, wow, that's a kind of depressing joke there. <laughs> that's pretty good. They had Twisted Sister that was playing in the piracy app. Uh, we're not going to take it. That was, I, I liked it. It was thematically okay with being in the piracy app. Um, let's see. The Imagine Spot, oh yeah, the Imagine Spot in Candy Crush where... Jean was like, well, what happens if it doesn't think I'm special candy? And it just imagined... Jailbreak just imagines Jean exploding, basically, and dying. And I was like, oh my god, did that actually happen? No, they just cut away from it. But I like imagined spots, especially when they kill a character in them. Uh, then we have spit takes. At one point, when uh, consulting with her council of evil... Smiler is I don't know if it was still just to be cleaning her teeth I'm guessing it was sort of a visual double entendre she's taking shots like she's pouring uh, Listerine I think it actually did say Listerine she's pouring mouthwash into a shot glass and she's taking the shots and she keeps getting bad news, and she keeps spitting it into the person giving her bad news' face. Which I'm like, was she supposed to just be day drinking? Or was she just cleaning her teeth and doing the spit takes, because spit takes are funny. But I like the spit takes as a sort of stress drinking thing, I don't know. Um, oh, at one point... Mel's wife, which haha, Mel. I don't know what her name was. Um, she distracts the bots by leaving them in the YouTube app. Uh, and she says, they'll be there for hours. And they're watching that Tickle the Cat uh, video for. They didn't say it was a 10 hour video, but I can guarantee you that was the joke because she said they will uh, be in there for hours. And 10 hours is camera did not die but there's a 30 minute recording limit on the a7s2 so i need to embrace brevity in future episodes anyways i think i got as far as front facing flash and that being crazy technology and uh really the only thing that was left before the fucking recording died was there being 13 establishing shots that i counted and I think earlier in this video I might have... No, because I just rewatched the video. I didn't establish <laughs> what an establishing shot was. And uh, an establishing shot, for my definition, is any time that the camera starts at like a high angle and a very wide angle and like cranes down to more or less parallel with the environment and then just shows this is 
This is the new environment. This is the visual language that you need to get familiar with to understand how the next several shots will play out. Because uh, anytime there's a, anytime a movie is a comedy, you can bet on there being too many establishing shots, almost, unless it's directed by Edgar Wright. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, that about covers the Emoji Movie. I think I've said mostly what everyone else has already said. Hopefully, maybe I said something new. But, there you go. Enjoy that. I'll see you all next time I go see a movie. And, uh, you know, if you have a movie that I should go and see, keep in mind I haven't seen anything that's a sequel right now that has a prequel before it like Kingsman the Golden Circle I haven't seen the first Kingsman movie so don't recommend I go see that because I'm not going to unless I just pay to see the first Kingsman or pirate the first one and then I go see the new one and then I review them both in the same video whatever if you want me to see something let me know uh and I'll see you next time. Peace out.